It's my pleasure to welcome Tony Hoops, the Athletic Director at Bethel College in North Newton, Kansas, to the podcast today. Tony, thanks for being here on the podcast. My pleasure. Excited to have to be a part of this. Excellent. So I think it is safe to say that higher education is a competitive market and schools are under pressure from multiple directions to keep their doors open. And athletics has a role to play in helping an institution not just to stay open, but to grow even in difficult times. Tony, you and your staff were faced with a particular challenge a few years ago, and you took a page from the marketing and branding playbook to meet that challenge. Start us off here a little bit with uh, talking about the challenge that you were looking to overcome there at Bethel. Yeah, so we had a unique in, in situation here. I, I, this is my fifth year as the athletic director here at Bethel College. I'm a Bethel College alum. In my eighth year overall here back at Bethel, I was a men's basketball coach for four years and then uh, did both for a year, uh, probably unsuccessfully and miserably, if you ask my wife, but I uh, <laughs> definitely attempted to do both. And um, what I learned through that process is what everybody kind of told me, which is, you know, Bethel's just uh, one and the same of the small college entities. And, and so we really challenged ourselves early on. We were at, you know, a struggling program, not just uh, across the board as an entire athletic department, trying to generate revenue, trying to generate growth as an institution and enrollment. Um, you know, we're an enrollment driven um, entity. And so really trying to figure out what's our niche. And everybody, you know, you hear it across the country and especially in our conference here is like, well, if we could just find our niche, if we could just be unique. Well, you know, I think so many times we try and focus on being unique and we forget to focus on what actually makes you unique. And so just a few you know, elements that we really looked at was, you know, it started with you know, we have 10 schools within the state of Kansas in our conference that are all four year private uh, faith based institutions. And now we have 13 total schools in our conference will be 14 in, in, a, in a couple of years. And we're all, you know, enrollment driven, small colleges in the Midwest. Um, you got 25 different four year schools in the state of Kansas that offer collegiate athletic programs. You got 19 community colleges uh, that offer sports and, you know, some of the best uh, community colleges in the country here in Kansas in the Jayhawk Conference. And so how in the world are we going to be different? How can we separate ourselves? And so one summer, uh, it was about uh, three years ago, we right before COVID, we had a, a book study that we started with our staff uh, that reluctantly by them, I will say. And it was it was the book uh, Legacy by James Kerr. Uh, it's the story about the New Zealand All Blacks rugby team, arguably the most successful franchise in sports uh, history and, and currently today. And, you know, I didn't know anything about rugby, but at the end of the day, I knew a lot about sport and was passionate about it. And I'd been referred to it by a couple of colleagues and felt like, all right, let's do this. My staff reluctantly for about, you know, two or three weeks, we'd break it down in every week and we'd, you know, read a chapter and discuss it, read a chapter and really delegate it out. And by the end, by about middle of it, all of a sudden we started to see this transformation occur. And what we realized was, is that um, we went from just talking about entities of trying to, how do we become unique to really becoming then like elements of intangibles that allow us to be unique. Um, and the book talks about like those separators are um, intangibles that are not money driven, but such as sacrifice and rituals and purpose and authenticity. And so we really wanted to be intentional about creating our culture, because if you're not intentional about creating it, it's going to get created by somebody else for you. And so we wanted to be purposeful in what we did. And that book really drove that conversation around us to try and create this unique culture that wasn't necessarily like, oh, well, we're going to throw a bunch of money at branding, but more a matter of how do we use something, quite frankly, when we had no uh, revenue and no ability to really increase uh, branding opportunities from a, a money standpoint, and do it in a way that um, was more of those intangible traits that our, that our coaching staff at the time really embraced and we're seeing the results of today. So one of the uh, those key takeaways, so you talked about what you and your staff learned from Legacy, that it was the idea of controlling the experience of your athletes and the community, even though you couldn't control the results of the competition. I think that's a really important insight. How did that lead then the idea of controlling the experience? How did that lead to improved competition results? Yeah. So, you know, I mentioned we weren't very good and I think that's an understatement. We were really, really bad um, in, in all <laughs> sports. And, um, you know, we do a commissioner's cup and the KCAC in my first year as an AD, uh, we were um, 30 points behind um, the second to last place team in the commissioner's cup at that point in time, much less, I think we're all, almost a hundred points out of first place. So that gives you an indicator how far back we were. And so 
we, we were not even talking about results at that point in time because we were so bad in so many different elements um, that we had to really focus on the experience. And so what we really focused on to begin with was we can't control the, um, the result, but we can't control the experience. And so we really tried to put it a lot into what's our game day like? Is it fun for our students to come to events? How do we get our students to events? How much can we give them a t-shirt to get them there? Um, and then as a result of that, that drove then some recruiting and it drove like, you know, individuals that wanted to be a part of the vision of it. Maybe they didn't see the results on the field or the court yet, but, you know, recruits then and coaches didn't want to be a part of that vision and people really buying into that and really connecting to one another. And so it wasn't just about men's soccer versus men's basketball, but how collectively together can we brand ourselves to make the Bethel College athletics and Bethel College as a whole uh, make that better. And so some things that we did that really helped out a lot. It was like, I'm a big believer, maybe I'm old school, but banquets really matter. And so we wanted to make our kids feel really special at the end of the year banquets. We drove something around that, or, you know, we wanted to really honor any little bit of success that we had. So if somebody was an academic all conference or an academic all American, we made a really big deal out of that. Um, if anybody was an all conference kid, I mean, if we waited to the postseason just in our conference, we made a big deal out of that. And I look back at those moments and kids really embraced that because they were just starving for success and our community was as well. And so those environments really matter. And now all of a sudden, now we have student sections that are electric. And we got, you know, just the other day, we had a Division II school in our, you know, in the MIAA here reach out to us. How do you get your students to create that electric atmosphere? And so, you know, just kind of have those conversations. And, you know, we're only a school of roughly 500 students. So, we, you know, we're really limited in our population. We're the smallest NAI school that offers a, a football. And so we have, we have our own challenges in that. And so we, what we began to do was we really wanted to make it more than just like, oh, well, if we could win, you know, well, then we'll get, you know, we'll get people to show up. Well, we can control that win. So we really began to focus on let's make the energy and the atmosphere contagious and then let winds drive it from there. And then, you know, fortunately, we've been able to see some success over the past few years. Uh, but it was not because we just invested a bunch of dollars in a scholarship or resources. It was more about the experience of our student athletes that they really uh, valued and recruiting that four year kid that didn't promoted retention as well. That idea of of recognition and being very intentional about the recognition, I think, uh, is very close to what you've described as a core value at Bethel, and that being gratitude. How did then uh, legacy and doing that book study and that deep dive into culture, how did that contribute to your understanding of gratitude? Uh, and what changes uh, along with that recognition uh, did you guys in the department uh, initiate as a result? Yeah, so one of our core value words, you know, we've got our mission, vision, and values. And, and the legacy book really drove driving about that mission and vision and values that connected them with the Bethel College mission and vision and values. Because if you're not connected in those two, um, you're not going to be successful in either entity and it can't be at odds with one another. And so the word gratitude is one of our core values. And what we really drove out of that is we're too small to be siloed, whether that's an athletic department as a whole or individualized programs. All of our coaches' offices are on this old dormitory that we're all on the same floor. And you're going to step out in your office and we got to celebrate each other because if you're siloed, we're just too small to do that. We really need each other. And so gratitude is something that we really embraced, created that culture. We use the phrase, we all have somebody else's dream job. Um, and so the book Legacy really drove that out there. They talk about sweeping the sheds and how the best, you know, the best players would stay afterwards and sweep the locker room out, sweep the sheds out. Um, they talked about uh, you know, one of the elements of that is our football team. Um, four years ago, we had our, our locker room flooded. It was in the basement of an old dormitory. And everybody should have every excuse as to why our locker room would be in a horrible shape. And we, we don't have enough lockers now for the 115 players that we had. And we're in the process of building a new one, but COVID has delayed it. And ironically, all of a sudden, our football coach at the time and, um, and the staff, you know, their, their focus was, well, if we don't have enough lockers, let's have our seniors share lockers instead of our freshmen because we want our seniors to give back to the program. So little things like that is what we really took from uh, the word gratitude and took from the, the book legacy. Um, and so we really wanted to kind of create that element that nobody really, nobody wins in comparison. And so we didn't want to compare programs. We just wanted to be unified in how we did that. And so we want to be really gracious for the opportunity that we have. Um, I'm gracious for the opportunity I have to be an athletic director at my alma mater. And, um, you know, and I think ultimately then that gratitude shifted our focus from, well, we don't have this and we don't have that. and We don't have this scholarship and we don't have these resources to then saying, well, instead of looking for the excuse, let's look for the solution. Um, and I believe that's really a separator that I think that that separates um, individuals or entities in higher ed 
because at the end of the day, we're all trying to do the same thing and build out the best student athlete um, experience that we possibly can. And so, you know, if revenue was the only way or if money was the only way that drove that about, well, then ultimately, then your schools that have money would always be more successful. But that's not always true. It helps. Uh, but we really wanted to find a way that how can we separate ourselves, um, you know, in, in regards to just something beyond a billboard, but something that really is, is felt and a community that is felt. And that that book really drove that for us, especially in regards to the word of gratitude. I have often said that if you if you asked a bunch of uh, branding and marketing professionals what their definition of the word brand is, you'd get 10 different answers. But one of the consistent ones is the idea that your brand is your experience and your brand is your culture, your brand is your story. So for all of this work that you and your staff were doing then on experiences, on this internal um, uh, reinvention, if you will, and making yourself different, how did that reflect how did those experiences reflect the Bethel College Athletics brand? And perhaps more to the point, how do they re- reflect the wider Bethel College mission, vision, and values? Yeah, so, you know, we're, like I said, a small institution um, that is really service-oriented, faith-based institution, um, and a Christian denomination, and, and a Mennonite denomination. It's, it's a smaller de- denomination across our country, but it's really driven about this um, cultural experience of, of really being service oriented. And so we really wanted to kind of build those traditions into our department as well. Um, and so because of that, it connected us um, from a, a, a athletics department with the greater institution and molding that together so that we could then connect our faculty together with our athletic department and drive that mission, vision, and values of the entire institution. So they're not at odds with one another, but they're connected to drive that Bethel College brand as a whole and I think that starts at the top. You know, it, if I'm not leading that charge and if I'm not connecting with all of our other vice presidents on our campus, whether that's student life or marketing or enrollment management or, you know, across the board or the advancement, well, then I can't expect my coaches or our athletes to do the same. And so we really wanted to be a part of the bigger picture of Bethel. And that's really what helped us a lot and it allowed us to build out then some of these traditions that we're building now that are really fun for our students to be a part of. Um, that have really driven then some of the um, success of our programs to make it contagious that people want to be a part of. So let's talk about some of those experiences and, and traditions. What are some of the some of the boots on the ground type stuff that that you all started to do? Yeah. So the biggest thing out of the, the legacy book that you probably ask any of our coaches is say, what would you get from Le- book of legacy was this idea of traditions and what connects your alumni to your current student athlete population or what connects them just to your entire population as a whole, you know, so we're in Kansas and Kansas basketball is, is a big deal in the state of Kansas. And so, you know, if you're not familiar with that, they have what's called the rock chalk chant and they, you know, they do it before the game. And then if they're winning, which usually occurs all the time in a bill self era, especially at home, you'll hear this rock chalk in the back background of the, of the, of Allen field house over the last minute of the game. And it's, it's notorious. Of course, visiting teams probably hate it, but the home team, it's, it's, it's a connector, right? And so if you graduated in 1950 or if you graduated in 2022, you know what the Rock Chalk chant is. And so we wanted to create something that for us. And so um, ironically, we were at a KCAC conference meeting and we were uh, trying to brainstorm some ideas as we were driving in the car. A few other coaches and my women's basketball coach and men's basketball coach at the, at the time came up with this idea of the roll-on chant. And it took us a little bit to grab onto it and figure out what we want to do with it. Uh, but it's a, it's a version of the Icelandic uh, clap that is you know pretty popular there in Iceland and and so we we developed that for uh for our student athletes and they really embraced it and the thing we phrased to them was um it's only it's only great if you um you know really kind of accept it from being corny to being cool because the difference in between corny and cool is your level of buy-in and our student athletes really bought into it and now we do it after wins, um, and you know, so there's the enticement to win, and you get to do the roll and chant, which then makes it even more cool because you know, like for example, this past year we had a Hall of Fame banquet of many people across the country that had come back for that Hall of Fame. Well, you know, we had a blowout game in football, which we were winning big, but everybody stayed for the end, especially those Hall of Fame members, because they wanted to hear the roll on chant at the end. Um, and I think that's a huge entity. So that tells me we're connecting our our older and our younger alums at the same time. Um, but some of those other traditions that we've done is we've named our student section, which seems like a little thing, but they're called the Stone Zone or the um, or the Threshers, which is probably where we're the only school in the country that has the Threshers as a mascot. It's not the most fiercest thing in the world. It's a rock. 
Um, and so we, uh, you know, we embrace that and go up the stone zone. Our uh, football team has, um, they sing Father Abraham after every single win. And there's a story behind that, um, which they told the story of Father Abraham and sang the song after a win one time back in around 2006. And since then, they've embraced that. So you'll hear the Father Abraham sing after that. Um, and really just the idea of leaving New Jersey in a better place. And I mentioned banquets earlier. Um, we believe that if we can uh, make a big deal out of banquets at the end of the year, really honor our student athletes, well, then they want to leave that jersey in a better place so that the freshmen, sophomores and juniors and incoming players will have something that legacy to live up to. And so we make a big deal. We call it the Threshbees at the end of the year. It's a mock off of the SBs. But we spend a lot of time on that, a lot of resources on that. And our coaching staff does it all. And I think that's a huge element is that you can't just be all about your program here at Bethel College. you got to be invested in everybody else. And that, that show there itself shows how we can put that all together. And I've got some really creative um, individuals that can do a lot of great things with marketing and digital branding and different things. And I just kind of let them go with it. I don't know how to do it. I'm not technology driven like that, but I let them to kind of go with it. And it creates a lot of fun elements for us. And, and our student athletes love it. You build some humor into it, you get a host and um, yeah, it just builds those traditions out for us. And so all of those, just, uh, each individual program has their own as well, but trying to be intentional about that has made a big difference for us and the traditions we've been able to build out. So a lot of very intentional internal work. This has been taking place over several years. You're creating a lot of fun experiences for your students. But I know that we wouldn't be having this conversation if it hadn't been successful in some way or another. So all of this branding, all of this, all of this experience, it goes towards a bottom line because that's why you want to get this stuff done. So tell me a little bit about what is the bottom line growth that you've seen from these efforts? What's the difference uh, that it's made to how your department operates and even how, how the institution itself operates? Yeah, I, I, you know, that's a great question because you are right. I mean, you can do all these intentional efforts, but if it's not producing results, well, at the end of the day is maybe, maybe you need to change your intentions. And so we've been able to be intentional. We've shifted some of these things. You know, it's not like we figured this out four years ago and magically it worked. It's been a growth process for all of us. And, you know, we grew a lot during COVID as well. And, you know, I remember at that point in time, we were still struggling as a, from a results standpoint. Um, and I remember telling our team and our coaching staff during that time frame, you know, COVID is going to allow us to close the gap faster than ever before because it's a level playing field finally. We just have to take advantage of that opportunity. And I think we've done a good job of that in closing the gap and having some of that success. We had our highest rate, um, highest finish in our Commissioner's Cup and our KCAC. We had our highest finish in the Learfield Cup, um, the Learfield standings this past year, both of those entities. You know, when you have men's and women's basketball as well as football and cheer go to the national uh, tournament and be able to be competitive. And you got men's uh, basketball ranked in the top 20 again this year and went to the sweet 16. Those things make a big difference for us. Um, and we're winning postseason games for the first time in school history, we're winning conference championships for the first time since 2015. So those make a big difference, but those results were all indicated by some of those underlying factors, which was one is our booster club grew by 500% in two years. And so that was all about branding and just trying to connect our alums and trying to get them um, yeah, it helped to have the revenue. But at the end of the day, we needed the members to be invested. We needed the people. Uh, so that booster club of growth is huge. Our retention has been unbelievable. This past semester, we are at, uh, we are at a 93.2% retention rate, which is the second highest we've had in the past 10 years, one of the highest we've ever had as a school as a whole. And when your enrollment isn't really all that big, it makes a big difference. Our past or two out of our past three years, we've had our highest enrollment of incoming freshmen uh, in school history. Which once again, you know, you look at, I think it's a 7% decrease or whatever it is across the country for higher education enrollment. We've been able to grow by over 3% in the last two years since COVID. So that's been huge for us. And then when you compound that with retention, it makes a big difference there as well. Our donations have increased. You know, people want to give to a brand that they want to recognize and they want to be a part of. You know, for example, we had a, a, a cheer and dancing competition that we had that we did live stream just a couple of weeks ago. We had over 10,000 viewers of that because we had over 25 schools competing in it. Well, that brand recognition made a huge difference in for our bottom line, not in terms of revenue, but you know, obviously it helped, but also allows for us now to market ourselves to our local um, entities and corporate donors at a level that before that they realized, you know what, I don't know if I want to give to that, but now, um, now they see the value in it. it makes a big difference there too. Our golf tournament corporate membership has doubled. 
Um, our community engagement um, overall has, has doubled in regards to what we're doing and connecting with local schools and local corporations, involvement in the Chamber of Commerce, all that stuff there. And then probably the last one, the biggest thing is our fan attendance is, uh, has uh, almost tripled in some sports, specific, specifically in football and basketball programs there as well. And so you add all those things together. Well, then all of a sudden now you realize why we've been able to have success. Um, and I think then more importantly to me is sustained success. Because I think we've seen a lot of sport programs or just, you know, businesses in general that can kind of have that, you know, that flash of the light, quick um, success story. But we really want to build something that um, develops sustained success over a long period of time. And that starts with intentional recruiting, but it also goes within the brand building that we're wanting to have so that our recruits want to be a part of something uh, for a four year experience, not just in regards to a short term experience for them. And then more importantly, when they graduate. Then all of a sudden they come back because we're going to graduate more student athletes this year than we've ever had in the past 25 years that I can market it back to. And that makes a big difference there for us. And from an alumni perspective, because that drives not only graduation rates, but then also drives just the ability to connect alums because they had a better experience. And when your alums have a better experience and it drives the bottom line for growth as an overall institution, which is what we want for our athletic department as a whole, connecting with the entire Bethel College. So it's not just that you started doing the roll on chant and all of a sudden everything was, was 100% better, but it was the little steps. It was the incremental, do this, do this, try this, that created this overall culture of experience that then starts to feed into all of these different uh, metrics of of success uh, that, that not only lifted the athletics department, but the institution as a whole. Is that a fair way to kind of summarize all of that? Absolutely. We started in the little things and those little things have now developed into bigger things and and we're not there yet. We haven't arrived by any means, but you're exactly right there, John. Like if those little things is what connected our people, especially when we still didn't have the results at that point in time. And if we're just, if we just sat around and waited for results to connect people, we'd still be waiting. Um, And we'd be waiting for another 20 years as well. And possibly may not even be in existence because of that, because, you know, it's, it's hard to survive in today's higher educational world as a small college. And so we wanted to just try and be unique in the small things, the things that we could control. And I go back to that experience as simple as a roll on chant, as simple as connecting people to um, something that they can identify with, something that they can be proud of. Um, that they can connect their grandchildren with, or they can connect their children with. And then you blow that out on social media. And all of a sudden now you get this community engagement of people. That's a, uh, an entity that people can connect with. Um, and it's more than just a roll on chant, but now they're connecting with the institution as a whole, which is ultimately what we wanted um, because then they can be prideful of it and they can be proud of what it is. Um, and, and we want our, our, want our, we want our alumni to be proud of what Bethel college athletics is because I want them to be able to, reminisce about the experience that they had, whether or not they won a bunch of games or didn't win a bunch of games. I want them to think positively about all the experiences that they had. Um, And so we look at that a lot of times, you know, we're going to play in a big game again tonight for the KCAC conference championship in men's basketball and win or lose. We want to make sure that we create the best environment possible because I want our fans to think back in five years, man, remember that time when we went to that game, what a great atmosphere that was. Um, And of course our players will forever remember that as well. You know, as a former student athlete myself, I don't remember all the wins and losses, but I do remember a lot of the experiences. I remember those. And that, to me, that's what I want to create for our student athletes here, because our mission overall is to create life changing experiences through uh, through Bethel College Athletics. And if we can do that um, in many different ways, that's not just in a game, um, then it allows us to live out our vision of recruit, retain and develop um, championship level programs, which ultimately is what drives um, the, the market in college athletics, um, because ultimately, you know, we're in this business to, to, to be successful and success can be defined, defined in a lot of different ways. But one of those is obviously winning games. And we want to make sure that we uh, do the best that we can possibly with that and, and, and provide the resources that we can to be successful in that. So if I may, just one, one, one thought before we, we, we close this out. I think one of the things that impresses me as a, as a branding guy uh, about your story is that it's not that you and your staff went into legacy and said, well, we have to do the Haka because that wouldn't have made sense, <laughs> you know, on, <laughs> on, on the plains of Kansas. Um, but you recognize this idea that there was something that was already there that you could draw out to make 
the school and your program different and start to create a little, a little bit of space in the minds of your campus community, your, your, your potential recruits, enrollment, the, 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 the outside com, uh, community as well. And it's, just, and it's looking for those things that already make you, you unique where you are in your mission, vision, values, and your area. Uh, and I think that is, for me, one of the big takeaways that I would encourage anybody listening to this. To your point, you don't have to wait for somebody to figure out what is your niche. There's already something there. And if you start building that, that can take you a lot of places. Is that a fair way to put that? Absolutely, John. I mean, you got to own who you are. And, mm-hmm. and we are a small school in the middle of Kansas, um, and we're unique. And we've got a, um, we've got a 90-year-old male guy that is going to come out and lead our student section to chance. And some people say, oh, that's weird. That's awkward. Well, you, or you can own it. And we've been able to own that. And so Lauren Reeser is part of our legacy and is part of what we do. But John, you know, as we've discussed over the past, you know, really six months about kind of how this book influenced us, if you were to ask me three years ago, well, a legacy is going to transform Bethel Athletics, I'd say you're crazy. It was just a simple take action point and do something with it. And quite frankly, until I really started reflecting on this over the past few weeks in preparation for this podcast, I'm not sure I quite realized the impact that the book really had on what we did here at Bethel College. Um, but sometimes that reflection in the rear view mirror really helps you drive about an appreciation and that gratitude of what we've been able to do. Um, but to your point, we didn't try and steal something from the book. We tried to just learn from it and be able to create our own brand of something that was already in, its, you know, if you will, in our own DNA. We just had to bring it to life. And I think that's what's fun for me as an alum is we've been able to bring to life a lot of the traditions and um, the excitement that people have within Bethel College Threshers Athletics. And we've just been able to put it more on the forefront that people can connect to and feel a part of and feel like they have an ownership, a part of that program, um, regardless of whether they played, you know, two years ago or 30 years ago. And I think that's what's been fun for us to be able to see that live itself out because of an intentional aspect by our coaches and our really entire college to try and build out this platform of uh, making Bethel College um, yours. And not It's not my program. It's not our coaches' programs. It's so much bigger than that. And people say that, but I think now you actually see that lived out because of how supportive our students are for one another and that they can think outside of themselves. And if you can get young athletes, 18 to 22-year-olds today and in a world that wants to just you know drive about individualism, well, then I think you got a chance to be really successful because then that becomes contagious to our alumni. And now, so now they want to be a part of something and some of our alumni maybe got burned in the past. And that makes a big difference there then too, is like, you know what, maybe your experience wasn't what you liked it to be, but can we make your experience even greater as an alum so that you can be proud of the institution that you have? And that's that's been the intentionality behind it. And quite frankly, it's just been um, taking steps. And whether or not we've took some wrong steps too, we've done some things. We tried to do something in football this year and mock something else, and it was a disaster. And we realized, <laughs> all right, well, let's not do that again. And that's okay because if you're just content with where you're at, you're not going to continue to build it out. And so we try to always try and be unique and do different things. And sometimes they work great and sometimes they haven't. But when they do catch on, boy, it's a lot of fun and, and, and students and alum really catch on to it. And it makes it makes something, you know, I never want our environment to ever be boring. And um, definitely that's something we try and do on a routine basis here at Bethel. Tony, I think the entire story here is really great, and I hope that this conversation is helpful to other small college ADs uh, around the country who might hear this. Um, Thank you so much for your time and your willingness to share all all of your insights. Um, There will be uh, contact information for Tony in the show notes for this uh, this episode. Uh, Tony, a pleasure as always to talk with you. Thanks for being here, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you, John. And thanks for what you do for small college athletics as well. Uh, You provide a resource for all of us to continue to grow. So thanks for your work. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. You can get in touch with our guest using the information listed here on the screen. You can also find it in the video description below and in the podcast show notes. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're listening on a podcasting platform, please subscribe, leave a five-star review, and write a review.
help other sports professionals find this podcast. Best of luck in your sports branding efforts, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.